Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here this morning watching our show. We've got a great one lined up, some exciting video, and you're really going to enjoy it. Our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center. Right on Highway 7 and 7 on Baldwin Road, a great educational institution, and I uh, encourage you to participate in it if you have any need for any of those courses over there, great courses. The first thing I want to mention now is daylight savings time. This, is this weekend is sort of sneaking up on us because most of the time we think about late October, but this year, first Sunday of November, it's going to be this weekend. And remember, in the fall, we're going to fall back. So we're gonna, it's going to be early, uh, more daylight now in the morning and going to be darker, uh, you know, 5 o'clock driving home. So. Be aware of that. This weekend, go ahead and set your clock Sunday morning. Uh, weather right now, it's still a little cool. 43 degrees here in Panama City, 45 in Mariana, 47 in Apalachicola, and 48 over in South Walton around Grayton Beach area. High today is going to be comfortable, 73. Low tonight is not going to be near as cold. It'll be about 58 degrees tonight, so really comfortable day. Uh, water temperature is 76. Our boating forecast, always an important part of our outdoor weather. The wind is coming out of the east at 10 to 20 knots. It's still blowing. It's been blowing since last uh, Saturday. 10 to 20 out of the east. Seas 2 to 3 near shore and 3 to 5 offshore. And you know what that means. It's going to be, be rough out there. It'll be a moderate chop on protected waters. The river readings. I probably should go to Bluntstown. Uh, again, it's at a point one. And I'm not going to say anything about it. I could have saved my paper all summer. And what about Choctahatchee? Okay, I probably should go to a point three. Choctahatchee is a point one. But, uh, you know, give or take a a point one tenth of a foot. It, the rivers are low, and, and again, we've talked about it all summer and, and this fall about how low the rivers are and how careful you need to be. Now we'll take a look at our Carl Vernon Marine Construction Tide Chart. Uh, Carl Vernon builds docks and sea walls and can help you in any kind of marine endeavor that you are uh, uh, seeking. Look at uh, Wednesday the second. We're looking at the high tide was this morning at 201. It's falling out. And the low tide is coming in right after lunch at 107, and then it's coming on in the rest of the afternoon. So it'll be a good afternoon of fishing on the incoming tide, and uh, also Thursday will be some good tides, but Saturday don't look uh, uh, very active right there. Okay? Every, uh, every Wednesday morning, I'd like to call our buddy down at Cape Sand Blast in St. Joe Bay, Captain Blair Morgan, sponsored by uh, Blue Water Outriggers. This fishing port comes through live, and Blair... Uh, around there all the time. Good morning, Blair. Good morning, Winston. How are you this morning? Hey, I'm doing great, buddy. Tell us what's going on down your way. Well, tell you what, over here in St. Joe Bay, uh, what you're saying about tides, we've had some, some of those winter tides. There hasn't been a whole lot of water in the bay over here all week. It's been uh, real low tides. And uh, there's not a whole lot of fish being caught out here. I don't, it seemed like they just kind of disappeared this time of year. They should be going to the mouth of the canal, but uh, people are having trouble finding them. Um, over in the uh, Apalachico Bay, uh, the speckled trout's been kind of slow over there, but they're catching a lot of white trout right on under the bridge there, there on the channels. But uh, I tell you what, last Sunday, well, last weekend the wind blew, as you know. Yeah. But Sunday I went over to uh, Appalachia and ate at a restaurant, and I couldn't believe all the boats that were still out there fishing. It was cold and windy, and the wind was out of the northeast. But they were all on the east side of the river, up at the mouth of those little creeks, and just anchored up against the bank, and they were catching some white trout and a few speckled trout. Still right on as bad as the weather was. Uh, Blair, what, what were they catching those, uh, those white trout on? Just uh, shrimp, just dead shrimp. Yeah. Just fishing on the bottom, and... Uh, they're catching some, you know, every now and then a redfish come by too, but I couldn't believe those people wanting to fish that bad because it was not a good day to be fishing. Well, you got to love it when you do that. Yeah. <laughs> and um, that's pretty much about it, Winston. Uh, okay. It's, everybody's bow hunting. You go up to uh, 65 and, and all the campgrounds up there full of campers. Uh, okay. Well, I know, I know everybody's having a good time. The weather has been pretty, uh, with exception the wind blowing a lot. So uh, Yeah, it's been real good for the bow hunters, that's for sure. Yeah. All right, Blair, thank you so much, buddy. Okay, Winston. All right, we'll see you later. Okay, Captain Blair Morgan, and we'll take our first break and be back with our special guest. Your vision is precious. 
If an emergency arises, you don't want to be sitting in a hospital waiting room. Accidents and injuries can happen outside of your workday. That's why our team of physicians provide emergency eye care to our patients anytime, day or night. You can count on your local experts in eye care to be there for you whenever you need us. The Eye Center of North Florida. We are so lucky to live in North Florida. We have some of the best fresh and saltwater fishing in the world. My biggest problem is not catching fish, but trying to decide what kind of fish I want to catch. No matter what I'm after, I always stop at Sun Jammers Water Sports first. They have just what I need, rods and reels, line, tackle, and most important, live bait. Yes, sir, we sure are lucky. Bill Kramer's Chevrolet Cadillac Buick GMC is Panama City's exclusive full-line dealership. Built on a 45-year foundation of trust and total customer satisfaction in all departments. Including our huge pre-owned department, where we'll pay top dollar for your current automobile as a trade-in. Or we'll place your vehicle on our lot and help you sell it. At Bill Kramer's Chevrolet Cadillac Buick GMC. Four decades, three generations, one tradition. Hi, I'm Paul Flagg with Professional Fiberglass and Marine Service. We offer all types of boat repair, fiberglass work, bottom painting, detailing, buffing. If your gel coat's looking dull, we can get that boat looking good for you again. We also offer a pickup and delivery service, and we have trailers that you can use if we are going to work on your boat, and we can come and get your boat for you. We can be reached at 850-960-9054, or you can reach us on the web at ProFiberglassMarine.com. Welcome back, and from Drivers Den, Bob Stapleton. Good morning. Good morning, Bob. Been on the show before, and uh, 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 I know y'all do a lot of driving. But first, uh, I didn't realize you're such a big hunter. Yeah, I like to hunt too when I have time. Yeah, and you <laughs> yeah. got you got a St. Vincent hunt lined up. There. I do this uh, this January, not for the sandbar, but for the uh, whitetail hunt. Primitive so. weapon hunt. Yeah, that, yeah, that's right. And you grew up in this area, so you we're talking about Indian artifacts, and you used to find a lot of them. And so uh, right. You You're can't right. stomp around the woods in this area long before you come across yeah. some Indian artifacts. Yeah. So you ride at home, uh, and but you've always loved diving. So we we're gonna we have a video we're gonna come up to later. But now you brought some, tell us about what's going on in the diving world now. Well, that. I thought today we could talk about spearfishing a little bit. I think most sportsmen are interested whether they've done it or not, or interested in what it's all about. Yeah. And uh, I think people generally have the idea that it's pretty easy to spearfish because. You see videos of all those fish down there, and you just swim down and shoot one and put him on your stringer. It's sort of like hunting. You know, mm -hmm. you see these videos, there are a lot of game, there's a lot of game in the woods. Mm -hmm. You just get you a gun and go out in the woods and pick you out a deer and shoot it. And it sounds easy to yeah, me. Yeah, it's easy. It's the same way with spearfishing. So having the equipment is uh, part, of the, part of the game, and mm -hmm. spearfishing is sort of like bow hunting in that uh, once you buy a bow off the shelf, you probably don't just walk out in the woods with that one and start mm -hmm. shooting it, that you tune it up. So I brought one in just as an example of a okay. spear gun. This is a, this is a, a model that uh, most is uh, of all American made. It's a JBL spear gun. I mean, I could rattle off names of spear guns like uh, rifles, but they're different manufacturers. Well, I guess the first thing I, I, I would ask, you know, how do you aim the thing? Yeah, well, <laughs> that, that's, I'll get to that. Let's start at the point okay. of, first, the, the uh, tips, it's like picking a broadhead. This one has a spinner mm -hmm. tip. Sometimes they're attached with mm -hmm. the cable so that the fish can't get uh, leverage on it to pull off. The length of the floppers on it matter. Mm -hmm. The size of the spear gun for where you're going to be hunting. This is a smaller one so I could get it on on the video, I mean, this would be minimum size for mm -hmm. around here because you're liable to come across a really big fish. Generally, the way it works is you have these rubber bands. I won't cock it, but you can see generally you, you pull them down, hook them in notches on the shaft, both of them, sometimes three bands, depending on how much power you need. And then there's a safety here that uh, works there. And when you pull the trigger, the bands sling the shaft like off a slingshot and also release the line. So. The shaft comes out, the line automatically mm -hmm. releases, and then you have your fish tethered to the back to you on the shaft. So 
uh, how you aim it is it's pretty much instinctive shooting like shooting a longbow with if it has a handle extension like this grabbing the back of the handle to kind of stabilize it in the water so you can move it around is helpful some some don't some don't have a handle back here and they're a little more difficult and maybe reach up to the front I mean you, you catch on to that with uh, with a little experience uh, but then uh, the one of the problems that most spear fishermen have, novice spear fishermen, to begin with is identifying fish under the water because they, they're so oriented to what color the fish is and red snapper are not red. Uh -huh. I mean, they're of kind of a flat silver color when you see them if they're deeper than 30 or 40 feet and mm -hmm. most all of our diving here is all around 70 feet out mm -hmm. to 120 feet. So just small items yeah. like that. And the rules for spear fishing are the same as for pretty much for hook and line fishing mm -hmm. is uh, there's some fish that you can't shoot spear fish like size. redfish but yeah. the size limits yeah. the the catch limits are and I are guess much I know right now here the guy talking about it and we see it too flounder it's good season for flounder. good season for flounder the flounder are coming in now and when they're in they're stacked up I mean yeah. you you'll see a flounder maybe all you see is a piece of the tail or an eyeball looking around mm -hmm. and when you see only that much you need to study it a little bit because they'll usually be laying on top of each other and the big female will be on the bottom and it would be not good style points if you bring a flounder up that's stuck through the middle I mean when you're down there you just stick them you don't have to shoot them with yeah, a gun yeah uh, <laughs> they're easy enough to get well Bob Bob works there at Divers Den and uh, we have brought some shirts here Divers Den shirts and we're gonna give we're gonna give away two these are extra large I'm gonna have to take two callers for a diver's den shirt during this commercial break. We're going to come back. He's got, he brought in a really interesting video, some great underwater footage. So I will take the break. My number is 819-5548. I'll take the two callers uh, that, that call us on an extra large diver's den t-shirt. We'll be right back. Come on down to Blue Water Outrigger, where you'll always find friendly service, fresh and saltwater fishing rods, top of the line men's and women's apparel. Don't forget to pick up your live baits and let us help you with all your outdoor needs. Check out our wide selection of top quality reels and hunting necessities and everything in between. Come see us or order online. We'll be waiting for you right next door to Piggly Wiggly, Port St. Joe. Crystal Grill, located in the heart of beautiful Port St. Joe, was established in 2002 by Patty and Dewey Blaylock as a family-owned coastal restaurant. In Port St. Joe, we meet at Sunset. Sunset's open for lunch and dinner every day of the week. Fresh seafood's brought in daily and served in a variety of traditional and creative ways. Try our award-winning gumbos. Steaks are grilled simple and perfect over an open flame grill. Our homemade soups, sauces, and salad dressings are so popular, we sell them retail. And don't forget, see the sunset at Sunset. Captain's Cove Marina, designed with fishermen in mind. Easy access to the best fishing along Florida's forgotten coast. Deep sea fishing, fly fishing from a kayak, cruising endless miles of bayous, bays, and the intercoastal waterway. Count on the captain's crew to work hard to make your day on the water the best ever. Captain's Cove Marina, 1617 Grouper Avenue, Port St. Joe, 850-227-3357. When you're looking for sales, parts, and service for your outboard, all in one location, you're looking for BJ's Marine. You're authorized to Hatsu and Nissan dealer. BJ's Marine does it all. They have outboard parts and a service center and used motor sales too. To Hatsu, reliable, dependable, fuel efficient, and lightweight to Hatsu Outboards. Technology for the next generation. BJ's Marine, 1317 Transmitter Road since 1991. Okay, we're back now. We'll congratulate the winners. Uh, Bobby Rose, uh, Panama City, and Hayes Hill over in Parker. I'll pick them up here at Fox 28 Studio and uh, we'll get some more. They, uh, some more of these away pretty soon. Nice shirts and all. And people still calling. Thank you all for calling. And, uh, but we've got to get on with the show. Now, uh, this, tell us about this video that you brought. Well, this video, I think you realize I was a little facetious about just walking out in the woods and shooting a deer or diving in the water and shooting a fish. You'll see it'll start off right away with uh, one of my dive buddies that already shot a fish, and it's thrashing around on a, on a piece of the structure. And uh, on the gun, the particular gun that I showed has this uh, nylon cord on it and around here that's not very satisfactory you usually use a steel cable and same reason you 
have trouble getting your fish up if you fish around these bridge spans because mm -hmm. they immediately go for the bridges. Another thing to point out is I want you to watch on these divers when they're handling their fish. You have to be an excellent diver before you even think about spear fishing. It looks like with the particles flowing by them they're sinking or floating but if you when I back off you'll see they don't move in the water. They just are stationary there while they're still handling their fish. There's even one where uh, DJ, one of my dive buddies, she, she's busy dealing with the fish and she reaches up and clears her mask because it adds some water in it. Yeah. I mean, and that's so automatic, you can tell it's just a smooth move she does. And that's one of the basic skills you learn in dive training. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot going on here that you need to watch and see what the problems okay. are. And then later on in the video, there's some fish. Uh, it's coming into sheep's head season and uh, the sheep said that you'll see are on a local wreck around here. We'll talk about it. Oh, all video local runs. video. Okay, Tom, yeah. let's, let's roll this and we'll talk over the video, okay? Here's that uh, fish that's speared and it's, he shot all the way through it, so it's all the way on his line, which is not a good situation. There's a ling already on his stringer. This guy's pretty good. He's wow. a Canadian buddy of mine that comes down occasionally. He how, was, how he was deep, here for four years. How deep of water are y'all in? That's about 60, 70 feet. Okay. It's probably on one of the local bridge fans. Okay. This was last summer. Man. But that's a barracuda he's got. The barracuda around here, I don't want to advertise this too much, but they're excellent eating. No There's way. DJ. She shot that one kind of through the lips. <laughs> so you can tell she's kind of having a problem getting it under control, but she manages fine. And it's in this video, you'll see she's just hanging there in the water. And that's a skill that is unconscious with her doing it but most divers are flopping around trying <laughs> to stay in one place and trying to keep it balanced I guess. right but she's totally comfortable with it you watch here in a second she'll clear her mask or maybe she already did that there she's stringing it up before you take it off the shaft okay that's a good point if there. you <laughs> <laughs> a lot of fish have gotten away by a novice spear fisherman trying <laughs> to take it off the shaft and then string it up Here's another time she had shot a, we call these reef donkeys, the amberjack. If you ever caught an amberjack, you know what a tussle they are. They're With a good strong. shot, it just stones them, they're dead. But this one, she didn't exactly get the best shot. But Matt came along to her rescue, and it's not that she couldn't handle it herself, but it's, it's helpful. You'll see the coordination and teamwork without talking that goes on here. She leads it around to where you can grab it. And where he grabs it there in the gills is where you need to grab a fish so that you got it under control. You got it at the head end and you can steer it around. Once you get a grip like he's got there, you're done. It's it's your fish then. Okay. But that's a little difficult to accomplish. Even after you string it up, they're still kick around some. That one uh, gave her a little whoopee there, but <laughs> here's the, another one. I think this is a fish I've shot. Now y'all on the bark? Diving the bark? Uh, I, this is one of the local inshore wrecks. I'm not sure yeah. exactly where this is. I think this is maybe it's on a bridge span. Oh, the, oh that previous one was on yeah. the BART, yes. Mm -hmm. Now you've got, you've got what, three of them? That's, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, one of my buddies, the, they didn't have their stringers with them. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that was convenient. <laughs> yeah, you can see I've got a pony tank on there. We pretty much solo divers. This gets pretty interesting here. Uh, sometimes you got to be aware of everything that's going on around you because somebody might be interested in eating the fish you just shot Ooh. even before you even after you get them on their stringer they are uh, most all of the inshore wrecks have a goliath grouper on them or three uh, i was down on the empire mica just uh, a few weeks ago and there was a school of about eight of them wow down there and these are protected and, they are protected and, yeah. yep yep Wow. That, that's yeah, because you can see, if they weren't protected, spear fishermen, yeah, that, that's totally. probably the only fish spear fishermen have really des could have des could decimate the population of. Yeah. I mean, you just swim up to it and blast it, you know, it would be no trouble to get them. This is on the same dive. This is just a minute or two after I videoed that uh, Goliath grouper just kind of easing along, looking around. People ask me about sharks all the time. These I never have seen one of these type sharks, a nurse shark, that showed any interest whatsoever in my fish. But they're very docile. We, they're they? very docile. Yeah. I wouldn't want to grab one by the tail, but they're very docile. But we do have problems with sharks. If you're dragging bloody dead thrashing fish around in front of their faces, they, <laughs> they, uh, they'll come in to investigate. And if you're not aware of what's going on around you, they'll have a fish ripped off your stringer before you know it. That's kind of exciting, getting snatched around by a shark. Tearing yeah. a fish on you. 
I didn't show you my stringer, but I carry it in very close right up next to my leg. Uh, you dangle one down. Some people have the idea if you dangle it down away from you, then the shark won't bite you. Well, it's just trolling for sharks if you do that. Uh. Normally when they come in close, they spook off when they see you. Now this is just descending down on uh, one of the inshore barges out here, a broken up barge, just a couple of miles out of the pass. This was last March, and I just wanted to show you what you can look forward to when the sheep's head come in. Uh, you can see a couple of few sheep's head there, but just yeah. keep watching. I mean, there, this was a huge school of sheep's head. Wow. And I'm sure they're out there breeding. Yeah. Is, uh, this was in early March, right? Yeah, right. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But we hadn't even started seeing sheep's head yet. I mean, I could see them because the, my vision angle is a little wider, but... Now, when you see so many, how do you know which one you want to well, shoot? Well, a lot of times I don't shoot them. I mean, there's... You shoot a few, you know, as often as I go, I'd, I'd uh, bust the seams on my freezer if I kept shooting <laughs> sheep's head. Yeah. But there are a lot of them there. That, wow, that is a school of them right yeah, there. Yeah. Wow. So I'm sure they're that way around the jetties, and I don't dive the jetties much, but I have. And uh, all the most all the inshore wrecks, it, when they're there, they're there thick. Now how deep are you right That's here? That's only 50 feet, maybe. 50 feet mm -hmm. of water. That's yeah, that particular yeah. dive site. I recognize it now as uh, one of the barges. That's come across these quite frequently. Uh, I don't want to do the Steve Irwin thing with it, but yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to get some good video of it. This is a smaller one. The, that, that one's probably only three feet across, but there are huge ones that come in. Mostly in the winter is when you see these, uh, the big southern stingrays. Uh -huh. uh, not, not as much in the summer. Uh, I'm seeing some of these up in the bay now. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I was over on the back side of Shell Island um, in, during the summer and there were thick small uh -huh. ones like that. I mean a lot of them. There's a redfish. That's one of them. One of the fish you can't shoot with a spear gun. I'm yeah. not sure why. Do you I see mean, a lot of redfish off? No, no, you, you not very many. It's very okay. seldom we see them out in the Gulf. Yeah. Sometimes, but not very often. Look, like another stingray. I, I'm looking for an excuse to shoot a stingray. Some people <laughs> say they eat them. I think it would be pretty sporting to tie into one of those big ones. Well, but, I want uh, you to get one and try it out and yeah. let me know how it, eat, how it eats. Okay? Uh, <laughs> if it's good, then we'll, uh, we'll make put them on the market. Yeah, we'll I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure where I'd shoot one. It wouldn't be any trouble getting a good shot on one, but I don't know where you could shoot one to kill it. It's like flounder. I stick them in the head, <clears throat> and I don't think I've ever killed one. <laughs> they, they're always flopping. Some fish, if you hit them in the right spot, they're just stones them. Now you don't, uh, at this time of year, you didn't see a lot of flounder in the, in the spring? Or? Well, okay. this, this is the time of the year when the flounders start yeah. stacking up. And we're beginning to see quite a few now okay. and, uh, on the inshore wreck. All right, let's take our final break, and we'll be right back with uh, the uh, t uh, this time for fishing today. My name's Captain Rick Corley. I'm a SAMS accredited marine surveyor, NAM certified marine surveyor, and I am he. Certified Marine Investigator. Been surveying since 1969. Was taught by my father, who is the oldest, longest practicing marine surveyor in the world. We do all types of survey, commercial or pleasure. Steel, aluminum, fiberglass, wood, makes no difference. Give us a call at 850-527-5287 or visit us online. We'd appreciate your business. You see the chores and ask, how can I do this? At Kubota, we see the utility vehicle and say, this is how you do it. With a smooth running diesel engine, a durable hydrostatic transmission, power steering, and four-wheel drive, you'll never look at a utility vehicle the same way again. The Kubota RTV 900 utility vehicle. You gotta see this for yourself. See and save on all Kubota tractors and equipment at Soul Tractor today. This holiday season, give the gift of nature. A walk through nature, Florida's Emerald Coast, is the perfect gift for the nature lover on your list. Whether they live close by or far away, they will love seeing the beautiful seascapes, wildlife, and lighthouses that Florida's Gulf Coast has to offer. Only $14.95 plus $4.95 shipping at naturewalkdvd.com or send check or money order to the address on the screen. A walk through nature, visually stunning. The greatest investment we can all make is in the life children and grandchildren. 
to help you invest for retirement, handle your IRA rollover, protect your family with life or long-term care insurance, call my dad for an appointment at his new office on Wilson Avenue behind Lowe's, and he'll give you a copy of his most recent book, Seven Steps to Serious Money. For free! Walter Wedrick, your serious money advisor! All right, welcome back. Let's quickly look at our express lane fishing game forecast today. Our time this morning, we're looking at 4.48 a.m. to 6.48, and this evening, 5.17 to 7.17. Okay, so that'll be our time today to get outdoors and enjoy some a action and all. Uh, I also want to mention, uh, yesterday we talked about, we had Donna Allen on the show, and she's officially opened our Pan Am Outdoor shop yesterday. So if you, uh, we had uh, lot, some hits on it, uh, sold some caps and shirts and all, so... Uh, we're going to talk more about it, but if you want to take a look at it, the shop itself is right here. Or go to our website here, Panel Outdoors, and then go to uh, shop over here on the far right on the web page, okay? If you have any questions on it, we're going to talk more about it. Speaking of shops, now, Diver's Den Shop. Well, I guess we're in competition with the Pan Am Outdoor well, Shop. Well, all we're selling is just yeah, but, caps and shirts. Yeah, and, yeah, and, okay. Uh, well, yeah. you can buy your spear guns at Diver's Den. Well, do you have to, I have to buy my own caps and shirts. you have to buy your own spear gun? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, they're pretty tough on me. make me buy my own spear uh, guns. Me too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, you can good time for uh, Christmas to pick one out or... Get a gift certificate for somebody to come by and get one. They, there's a, this is just one example of a spear gun. There's several uh, different types of spear guns that might be interested. Okay, you, you get have two you, locations, right? There's a location on Tyndall Parkway just before the DuPont Bridge, mm -hmm. headed towards Tyndall, and then on Thomas Drive, uh, just before the bridge uh, at the Grand Lagoon on the right side. Uh, easy access to both of them, and both shops are well equipped. And they share equipment between the shops. If there's something one shop doesn't have, the other one probably does. So, uh, well, we finally broke down several years back, uh, and, and finally got some good masks and snorkels just just for uh, scalloping. Yeah, so, sure. You know, that, I, I mean, know, anytime you put quality. your yeah, anytime you put your face in the water with equipment, it needs to fit right. And, yeah. And if it do, if you can go to some place and just pick one and go, uh, you might have yeah. a problem. But they can help you with the fitting and uh, getting the proper equipment for what you want to do. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to have to wrap it up, Bob. Thank okay. you, buddy. Appreciate you coming up. You betcha. Enjoyed it. All right. That was a good video, too. Yeah, I'm glad you liked it. All right, folks, we got to get out of here. And uh, we appreciate you watching the show. We appreciate you supporting our sponsors, like Divers Den and Blue Water and CNG and all these guys that sponsor us. And uh, we really do appreciate it. Do something good for somebody today. God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle on Tours with Winston Chester. Panhandle on Tours features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle on Tours.